with Boca Juniors about to enter another Copa Libertadores semi-final. They will be playing Brazilian side Santos in about 12 hours time, and since I had this video ready to go, I figured I would release it. I mean no harm to any Boca fans, it's just an interesting story of the Copa Libertadores. And what is that story? The story, or the question, is this. How did a dog, which bit a player in the middle of a Copa Libertadores game, actually end up helping the game and the tournament? It's a crazy story. Keep watching to find out more. It was the semi-finals of the 1991 Copa Libertadores. The tie, top Chilean side Colo Colo versus the famed Boca Juniors of Argentina. The first game was played at Boca's home stadium, La Bombonera. A penalty in the seventh minute put Boca one goal ahead. The game ended 1-0 in Boca Juniors' favor. But the second game was a different affair. Both sides were keyed up and both sets of fans were confident as they made their way into Estadio Monumental in Santiago, Colo Colo's turf. Each side had their reasons for being confident, but the odds seemed to favor Boca Juniors. Why? Because in 1991, the Copa Libertadores had been won 16 times by Argentine sides and never by a Chilean club. The first half played out cleanly and rigorously. Then, in the 64th minute, a neat play saw Chilean midfielder Marcelo Batichiotto dance his way through five Boca Juniors defenders, an impeccable cross to Ruben Martinez, and 1-0 to Colo Colo. The fans were ecstatic. Just two minutes later, their wonderful combination play continued. From a header, a quick 1-2, and the wingback Mendoza's through ball to Patricio Yanez. Another lobbed cross, and Batichiotto scored again. 2-0 to Colo Colo. If they kept the score level, Colo Colo would be through to the finals. But when, 74 minutes in, Boca's young forward Diego La Torre headed the ball in, the crowd seemed crushed. If the score held, Colo Colo would lose on aggregate. La Torre's celebration was seen as mocking. The seed was sown for what was to come. The pot was about to boil over. Eight minutes before the final whistle, Martinez dribbled up the left side of the pitch. He sent the ball to Patricio Yanez. Yanez passed the ball to Martinez, who rounded the keeper and scored. 3-2 in favor of the Chileans. Now, Colo Colo would surely go through. But at that moment, the pot boiled over. The Boca Juniors defenders claimed Ruben Martinez was in an offside position when Yanez passed him the ball. Pandemonium. Players, managers, assistants, journalists spilled over onto the pitch. A brawl, indeed a battle, including casualties. Yet the most remarkable action on the pitch during the chaos that evening was not a player nor a manager, nor even a human being. As the military police aimed to gain control of the pitch, they held dogs, German shepherds, on leashes. Boca Juniors keeper Navarro Montoya had been a central figure in the brawl. Just as he was backing away from the scuffle, one of the military police dogs bit him on the buttocks. The dog, whose name was Ron, was well trained. He did not savage Montoya. He did not maul the player. The bite was like a holy remedy. Ron did what he had been trained to do, and it worked. The players backed away from each other. Within minutes, the pitch was clear. 
peace settled over the stadium. Incredible. Incredible because such brawls usually result in the match being ended. It is a mystery why Ron went after Montoya specifically. Perhaps he knew the bite would stop the violence, as indeed it did. When the pitch was cleared, the referee sent two players off, one from each side, and the game was restarted. Truly remarkable. And Boca Juniors, with about seven minutes left to win, did not give up. They tried attacking again, but ultimately, the game went to the Chilean side. Colo Colo went through to the finals, and in the finals, they won. Their first Copa Libertadores. The first for a Chilean side, and as of this video's release, the only time a Chilean side has won the tournament. Truly a triumph for the 1991 Colo Colo squad, for Chile, and perhaps for Ron, the Santiago military police dog.